Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Trump aides are at their wit's end. Forget senior White House staffers, outside advisors, friends and others close to the president. There's only one person who truly knows what Donald Trump is thinking at any given moment, Donald Trump. The president's surprise Friday morning tweet threatening to veto a $1.3 trillion government funding bill, and subsequent reversal in a matter of hours, capped another week in which Trump's impulsive decisions undermined his exasperated staff. Tensions were running high in the White House on Friday, especially on the communications team, as staff scrambled to figure out whether the president truly really intended to veto the bill or was just blustering. There is growing concern in the West Wing that the president's unpredictable behavior is undercutting staffers' credibility, according to two people who have spoken to White House officials in recent days. The press and comms team, more than others, are at their wit's end, a former White House official told Politico. I don't blame them for being frustrated, because they're on the front lines of this and are directly responsible for dealing with the blowback of the president's unplanned tweets. The White House did not respond to a request for comment. Less than 24 hours before Trump threatened to blow up the deal to keep the government open, the White House sent two senior staffers, Office of Management and Budget Director Mick Mulvaney and White House Legislative Affairs Director Mark Short, to brief reporters about Trump's support for the spending bill. Let's cut right to the chase. Is the president going to sign the bill? Yes. Why? because it funds his priorities," Mulvaney told reporters. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence touted the legislation during a Thursday speech in New Hampshire, telling Trump supporters it includes a crucial down payment toward building a massive wall along the Mexico border. And, despite Trump's misgivings, the White House itself circulated statements saying the administration supports the bill and casting the legislation as a win for the American people. Trump's Friday tweet unleashed a wave confusion in the White House, with aides and even senior officials such as Defense Secretary James Mattis rushing to convince the president that he should accept the bill. Ultimately, Trump signed the bill on Friday with Mattis by his side, saying the move was a matter of national security. He also made sure to knock the spending package, calling it a ridiculous situation and pledging, I will never sign another bill like this again. But in the run-up to Trump's announcement, White House aides privately acknowledged it wasn't outside the realm of possibility that the president would double down on his opposition to the legislation, plunging Washington into chaos. Asked earlier Friday whether Trump was serious about vetoing the bill, one White House official said simply, who knows? White House officials had long been aware that the president was unhappy with the legislation, but they believed they had convinced him to support it. Friday's tweet again raised questions about whether the president's senior advisors are capable of following the president's ever-evolving stances on crucial issues of national importance. This is a reminder that if you're working in this White House, you either need to spend the time with the president on the front end to know exactly what his thinking is or you need to be in constant communication with him, said Jason Miller, Trump's former campaign spokesman. If you're just responding to what some other staffer sent you on email, then of course you're going to be disconnected. That falls on the staffer, Miller added. It doesn't fall on the president. White House aides counter that they're not misinformed, Trump, they argue, is just prone to changing his mind, leaving a trail of contrary statements in his wake. After the Washington Post reported last week that Trump had decided to remove H.R. McMaster as national security adviser. Trump insisted on issuing a statement raising doubts about the story, even though many in the White House knew the president wanted to eventually replace McMaster. Just spoke to at Botus and Jen Relay Char McMaster, contrary to reports they have a good working relationship and there are no changes at the NSC, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders tweeted in response to the story. White House officials believe that Trump wouldn't actually pull the trigger on replacing McMaster for several weeks. But Trump apparently had different plans. One week after Sanders' tweet, 
Trump decided to replace McMaster with former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton. The same scenario has played out across the administration, with agency officials sometimes delivering policy statements that are later contradicted by the president. Hours before the White House announced plans to meet with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, then-Secretary of State Rex Tirson told reporters, we're a long ways from negotiations. People who regularly speak to Trump say he hates seeing his next moves previewed in the press and he delights in keeping people guessing. When the New York Times reported earlier this month that the president was poised to shake up his legal team, Trump denied it on Twitter, saying he was very happy with his lawyers. John Dowd, one of Trump's top lawyers, resigned this week. Sometimes regular contact with Trump isn't enough to anticipate his next move. White House officials say they've left meetings believing an issue is settled only to see the president publicly relitigate the issue after speaking to an outside ally on the phone or seeing an alternative take on cable news. The biggest challenge is when staff think they've talked him out of something he initially supported only for it to resurface, sometimes publicly, at a later date, another former White House official said. Trump's aides often try to account for the possibility that the president's positions will shift, telling reporters asking about anything from trade to personnel that nothing is final until it's announced. For the press, the phrase has come to symbolize a simple reality in this White House, nobody knows what's going to happen until it happens. Stormy Daniels says she felt threatened to remain silent about Trump affair. Adult film actress Stormy Daniels said she was physically threatened after speaking out about her alleged sexual relationship with Donald Trump and feared legal retribution if she didn't keep silent. They made it sound like I had no choice, Daniels told Anderson Cooper in an interview Sunday night on 60 Minutes, saying she had previously denied the relationship out of fear and under pressure from a now former attorney. The exact sentence used was, they can make your life hell in many different ways. The highly anticipated broadcast came as Daniels is suing over a non-disclosure agreement signed just weeks before the 2016 election. Michael Cohen, Trump's personal lawyer, has said he paid Daniels $130,000 of his own money to buy her silence. Daniels has offered to return the money. The hush money contract was signed by Cohen but a signature line for Trump was left blank. The payment has drawn scrutiny from federal regulators and prosecutors. Daniels, whose given name is Stephanie Clifford, said she felt physically threatened over the affair as early as 2011, after she spoke to In Touch magazine. After that interview, she said, a man approached her in a parking lot and threatened her and her daughter. I was in a parking lot, going to a fitness class with my infant daughter, she said. A guy walked up on me and said to me, leave Trump alone. Forget the story. The man looked at her daughter, then added, that's a beautiful little girl. It'd be a shame if something happened to her mom, Daniels told 60 Minutes. The White House did not respond to requests for comment. Daniels said she agreed to sign the non-disclosure agreement in 2016, shortly before the November election, because she was worried about her family. Cohen arranged the transaction and has said he drew on a home equity line of credit to come up with the cash. After the deal became public, Daniels signed a statement denying any affair with Trump, a decision she said Sunday was hastily made. The $130,000 transaction with Cohen has drawn scrutiny from the Justice Department and the Federal Election Commission, which regulates campaign donations. If the payment was made to benefit Trump politically, it could be considered an illegal campaign contribution. The payment's timing could be problematic. The non-disclosure agreement was reached just weeks before Election Day 2016, as Trump's campaign was reeling from the release of an Access Hollywood tape in which the candidate was heard bragging about grabbing women. It's a $130,000 in-kind contribution by Cohen to the Trump campaign which is about $126,500 above what he's allowed to give," said Trevor Potter, a former FEC chairman who was appointed by President George H. W. Bush. If he does this on behalf of his client, the candidate, that is a coordinated, illegal, 
in-kind contribution by Cohen for the purpose of influencing the election, of benefiting the candidate by keeping this secret, Potter told 60 Minutes. Potter now is president of the nonpartisan Campaign Legal Center, a watchdog group. Daniel's lawyer, Michael Evnati, disputes that Cohen was working on his own. As evidence, he pointed to documents showing that the non-disclosure agreement Daniels signed was delivered to Cohen at his Trump Organization office in Trump Tower in New York. This idea that there's a separation now between Mr. Cohen, individually, and the Trump Organization or Mr. Cohen, individually, and Donald Trump, it, it, it's nonsense, of Natty told 60 Minutes. Daniels said in the interview that she had a one-time sexual relationship with Trump after meeting the then star of NBC's The Apprentice at a charity golf outing. She and Trump discussed the possibility of her joining the show, she said, but the idea never came to fruition. The pair's first meeting got off to a rocky start when Trump bragged to Daniels about a recent magazine cover featuring his photograph, she said Sunday. She said she retorted that someone should spank him with it. And I said, you know, give me that. And I just remember him going, you wouldn't, Daniels said. And I was like, turn around, drop him. Daniels said she had sex with Trump, which she said was consensual even if she was not attracted to the future president. The White House has said Trump denies the allegations against him. Trump ignored questions from reporters earlier Sunday about whether he planned to watch the interview. Despite the current battle over the agreement, Daniels said Trump never asked her to keep quiet about the affair when it occurred. He called several times when I was in front of many people, and I would be like, oh my god, he's calling, she said. And I put him on speakerphone, and he wanted to know what I was up to and, when can we get together again?